Good morning. Welcome to the April 24th worship service of Shelbyville First United Methodist Church, the Church on the Square. On this, the second Sunday of Easter, we welcome everyone here in the sanctuary, as well as those of you worshiping with us on Facebook Live or on WLIJ Radio. Our interim pastor is the Reverend Jim Beatty. Brother Jim's message today is, I have seen Jesus, and it's from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. This morning we want to thank Irby Simpkins, serving as our liturgist, and Mickey McLean, who will be bringing our children's message later in the service. Our musicians are Lori Schuler and members of the Chancel Choir. We always want to thank our technical team uh, who get us on Facebook Live and WLIJ and make it where you can hear everything here in the sanctuary. And that team is John Carney, Cassie Davis, Wayne Crowell, Dulcy Davis, Rachel Swift, and Jeannie Phillips. We appreciate them so much. We have beautiful flowers on the altar today. They are given to the glory of God and in honor of Kelly and David Clark and their children, Taylor, Jack, and Clayton. And they are given by Barbara and Randy Owen. Many of you have noticed that the paving of the square process is beginning today. And we want you to keep that in mind, uh, especially through the activities of this week here at the church and next Sunday's worship as well. Uh, there will be parking in the rear of the church for the weekly activities. Uh, there would also, uh, when it's after hours, uh, you could park behind City Hall when it's after the City Hall hours. But please be aware of that this week as you come to these uh, occasions at the church. After church today, right after the service, the trustees will meet. Uh, also this afternoon, our confirmation session number six will take place at 4 p.m. and UMYF at six. Also on Tuesday, United Methodist Women Circle 7 meets at 10.30 a.m and Circle 8 meets at 2. Also, uh, this Wednesday night is our last uh, Wednesday night meal of this particular season. Uh, it will be at 5 p.m. Our menu for this one is smoked pork, loaded baked potatoes, broccoli salad, rolls, and strawberry shortcake. Please fill out the insert if you'd like to attend that or you can contact the church office by noon tomorrow. Next Sunday, the Wesley Warriors will be singing during our morning worship service. And after that service on Monday, uh, Sunday, May 1st, the worship and witness team will meet as well. All right. Uh, we are starting to pass the collection plate again after the pandemic. Uh, we had ceased doing that, but if you would, we will need helpers in order to do that. So if you would like to help with passing the collection plates, be sure to see Rayetta Wilson uh, to set up the Sundays that you would be willing to help. That starts next Sunday. Yes, thank you. And also the Friends of Aiken School, that is a great outreach of our church uh, they're excited to announce another opportunity to serve. Uh, they will be assisting with the carnival activities on Thursday, May 5th, and Friday, May 6th. You need only to sign up for a time slot, not an entire day. Helpers would be welcome to come for 30 minutes, an hour, or whatever you could do. The sign-up sheets are in the narthex. If those dates, May 5th and 6th, don't work for you, you can also help the following week, May 12th and 13th, as Aiken celebrates its field day activities. And now, let us prepare our hearts to worship our risen Savior and Lord.
Almighty God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross. Grant that we may share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection through Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So are we now where Christ has led, following our exalted head. Made like him, like him we rise. Ours the cross, the grave, the skies. Please stand as you're able as we join together in singing, Crown Him with Many Crowns. <laughs> the opening prayer found in your bulletin. Let's pray. O oh Lord, your wordless birth means nothing unless we are born again. Your death and sacrifice mean nothing unless we die to sin. Your resurrection means nothing if you be risen alone. Raise and exalt us, O oh Savior, both now to the estate of grace and hereafter to the state of glory where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, God forever and ever. Amen. We want to remember this morning those that are in our prayer list. Uh, Scott Hubbard had a procedure done late this week, and we want to keep him very much in our prayers as we move forward. There are others in our midst who have suffered illness and deaths, and we remember each of you. Uh, and keep you in our prayers as well. At this time, let us bow our heads for our morning prayer. Our Heavenly Father, you 
you look upon us and you shine glory into our lives. We stand in the shadow of the cross and in the sunshine of the resurrection, knowing that you not only are the suffering servant for our sins, but that you're the Messiah, the everlasting, ever-living Savior for our sins. Guide us this morning. Help us to open our hearts to your word, to your presence. Help us to look about us and to see what, what is really you in the midst of all that we do. Help us to be able to see you in our lives and in the work that we do. Guide us this morning. Fill us with your spirit. Lead us as we worship you and as we go forth to serve you. This, Lord, is our humble prayer. Bless it as you bless the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We support our church and the many ministries that take place through our church, not only in local level, but on a conference level as well. And we celebrate the fact that, that we are a part of a connectional church. So this morning as we receive the offering, we're not going to pass the plate, but we're going to bring the plate down, and we're going to celebrate that we have this opportunity to give. seated except for the children. Children, please come forward for a message with Miss Mickey. Good morning. Hello. How are Hello. you today? I'm coming down slow. Oh, there's me. I'm so glad to see you. You know what? We have celebrated Easter, haven't we? And I brought some things today. Oh, look, I've got my Easter basket. Have you had an Easter egg hunt? Yeah. And an Easter basket? Yeah. Oh, good. Didn't we have fun? And, you know, today I was going to talk about the Easter egg and how this one, when we open it, that... What what happened? Do you see anything? No. There's no there's nothing in it. Wait a minute. Am I mixed up? Uh oh. What did I do? What happened? I didn't put stuff in it and maybe we talked about this last week, right? Last week was Easter. But you know what? We can celebrate Easter every day, and we can be excited about Easter every day. Okay? okay? That's what we're supposed to do, because what happened when they went back to the tomb? When they put, went back to where Jesus was buried, and they looked in it, and his friend Mary looked. What did she see? Nothing. Nothing. He was not there. Mandy's disappeared from us today, too, hasn't she? <laughs> Mandy, I see you. Yeah. But do you know what? Mary was one of his best friends. It wasn't his mother, Mary. It was one of his friends. And it, he reappeared to her. Did you know that Jesus came back 
and she saw him. Oh, it was just wonderful. She was so amazed that she just couldn't believe it. There he was after he'd been dead in the tomb. She was so excited. I've got a book here that's got some really neat pictures and illustrations in it. And I wanted to read you a page from this book. There is Mary, seeing Jesus. Mary was so happy, she knew Jesus was the Son of God. Jesus was alive again. Jesus said, I can't stay with you, but I'm here to tell people to remember me. Then, he went to see his disciples. They were so amazed. Can you just imagine seeing him again? They just didn't know that they would ever see him. But you know what was important about this? That he knew, they knew he was the Son of God. He had died for them. And he came back to live with them for a while. Where does he live with us? Do you know? Have you thought about that? Jesus lives in our heart. And he came back to tell them, don't forget about the things that I have taught you. Don't forget about what I, I have told you about God and how to live. And one of the most important things was love. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. So that was a very important message. Don't you feel good when somebody helps you do something or they smile at you or they give you a big hug? They're showing their love, aren't they? So you show your love to others. You know, there's an old song that I thought about. It says, love is love if it stays, let's see, love isn't love if it stays in your heart. Love isn't love until you give it away or something like that. So I remembered that little, little verse from that old song. Love in your heart wasn't put there to stay. Love isn't love until you give it away. So after we have a prayer... I want you to take something with you and remember to give your love away this this week and from now on and every day be excited that Jesus is alive, okay? Let's have a prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for sending your son Jesus. We want him to live in our hearts. Help us to teach others about him and share our love and be excited about the Easter story every day. Amen. There's, a, there's one for you, and I want you to share one. Well, of course, Rayetta was perfectly right. I just skipped over some of it, didn't I? Uh, this has not been my morning. Uh, I had a nice visit with John Bell and Jeannie this morning when I was sitting on the curb out front because I forgot my keys, and I was waiting for somebody to come and let me into the church. And John and Jeannie and I stood out, sit out there and talked for about 10 minutes on their way to church. So it's, uh, it's been an interesting morning nonetheless. But uh, I apologize to Rayetta for catching her by surprise, and I did. When she got up here, she said, this is after children's time. I said, I think you're right. <laughs> so at this time, then, we're going to sing our hymn, and then we're going to move on to our, to our prayer of illumination and our gospel reading and our anthem. As you remain seated, let us sing, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
scripture to seek your wisdom and your truth. Send your Holy Spirit to open our minds and hearts to receive your word for our lives and our times. Equip us to follow Jesus Christ, your living word. Amen. Amen. Our morning scripture reading is from Luke. 24, 13 through 35. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking to each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. And then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and all this besides the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of the women of the group astounded us. They were at the tomb by early morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe that all of the prophets have declared what all of the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah suffer these things and enter into glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted them to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, because it's almost evening and now the day is nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened. They recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. He, they said to each other, Were our hearts not burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God.
Now, who among you has the uh, wind to preach? <laughs> It's just not going to work this morning. No. Well, we'll use this one. We've seen Jesus. Do you imagine how powerful that is when the disciples came back to Jerusalem and told the apostles in the upper room? We have seen Jesus. That's a message that all of us need to hear. And it's my belief and my contention that we have all seen Jesus if we were lucky and if we paid attention. I've seen Jesus. I laugh and say I saw him in my mom. I remember when we moved from Centerville to Murfreesboro in 1961, and I went to Sunday school, and I was all excited when I came home. I said, Mother, I had a different teacher. My mother had been taught my class from the time I was born until we left Centerville when I was 12. And I found out later that she was the only one that would take on my class because I was in it. Kind of felt sorry for the ones in Murfreesboro. They didn't get that option. So I saw, I saw Jesus in my mom, but more than that, I saw Jesus in my dad. I watched him as he served, as he labored, as he worked. The four, the four years we were in Murfreesboro, I think he averaged 60 visits a week. He went out and saw people, took about 400 people into the church in those four years. And I tried to do the same kind of work when I, when I went into the ministry full time. Yeah, I watched my dad. I never knew a better man. Never heard him say anything off color. He played golf three days a week with three older men, and two of them had quite colorful language. And dad would hit a bad shot, and he'd, he'd, look, he'd look over at Grady and say, say something appropriate, Grady. And Grady would say, well, you've heard me say it enough that I don't have to say it. You know what to say, but Dad wouldn't say it. Yeah, I watched him. He was, he was an example that I, that I strive toward and really never reached a good man, a man where I saw Jesus. I saw Jesus in my bishop. Now, I always laughed, laughed at the annual conference because the, the retirees would get up and talk about uh, they, they served under three bishops or they served under four bishops. I served under 11 different bishops while I was in the ministry. But you never forget the first one. And the first one is Roy Short. Bishop Roy Short. He was my bishop. When I got my license to preach when I was 13, I was taken to a young minister's convocation between the Tennessee and the Holston Conference. And it was at Kingsport. And Bishop Short was there. And three or four or five times during the two days we were there, he managed to come around and sit down and talk to me about the ministry, about the commitment that I was making to, to Christ. Uh, he was my bishop and always will be my bishop. I also saw Jesus in my lay leader. Now, who was my lay leader? My lay leader was the man that was the lay leader at St. Mark's when I got my license to preach. His name was Lloyd Stone. Lloyd was a great man. He then became the lay leader for the Tennessee Annual Conference. He was a man that encouraged a, a shy, uncertain young man that had no confidence, and that was me. And he encouraged me. He always said I was going to be his bishop, and I didn't do that. <laughs> I think he shot pretty high on that one. But he encouraged me to continue the path, and I saw Jesus in him, and I followed the path that he led me to. Now, in my first church at Summitville out in Coffee County, I saw Jesus in Cynthia Roberts. Miss Cynthia was retired. She took me home with her every Sunday for lunch. And we would talk about the service. 
she shared with me tracks from Billy Graham. And uh, some of those, I, I still, well, when I could find my sermon file, I still had sermons on file that I wrote based on some of those, tra- those tracks. Great preacher. And I loved the way he spoke. But Miss Cynthia showed me Jesus in the way that she treated a young preacher, in the way that she loved me. Now, I've had, I've had many people, men and women, through the years. I can't name them all. Eunice Eastlick in Flintville, Frank Parks in Hillsborough, Carson Wright in Livingston, Wes Fortner in, in Waverly, Jim Williams in Waverly, Bob Tuttle in Tullahoma, and Bob Barksdale in Tullahoma. They're just a few of the people through which I saw Jesus. And it led me to, de- to a deeper faith and a deeper understanding. But now, what difference does it make? You see, that's the key. I mean, we can talk about that I saw Jesus, but, but did it make a difference? Think about the scripture that we read. What, did, what difference did it make with them? Well, first of all, it caused a change of direction. These people were going home. They were leaving Jerusalem. They were going to Emmaus. They were going home from the vision and the dream that they had. And they were leaving it behind. Well, when when we see Jesus, there's a change of direction in our life, too. Because we find ourselves more deeply committed, more concentrated to Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Lord. To us, we go, we go back to Jerusalem. We go back to the core of who we are and who Christ is. So it causes a change of direction in our lives as well as it did those disciples. Secondly, it caused a change of heart. These disciples were depleted and defeated as they left Jerusalem. They, they left thinking the dream was over. They said, but we thought it was he. Not that we know it was he, but we thought it was he that was to bring in the kingdom. Well, folks, when we see Jesus, it causes a change of heart in us. We are no longer depleted, but instead we are filled with what Christ is and with what Christ can do. And we go forth and and it shows to the people that we see, the people we work with, the people that we, that we communicate with every day, they see Jesus in our spirit and in the way we live our lives. I remember the old story about the man that uh, walked around the corner of the church. Every Sunday he walked around the corner of the church. One of the young men got to watch it, and every Sunday he'd come around the corner and go sit down in the first pew. And he watched, and he watched, and after about six months, he he said, what are you doing? He said, I'm being faithful. That was all he knew how to do, and so he was faithful in it. He came every Sunday. It's like the the deaf man that came and stood on the front row every Sunday, but couldn't hear a thing of what was going on. But he came and made a witness to his Savior by being present. It causes a change of heart in us. We become full of what Christ wants us to be full of, full of his love and his grace. And he sent us forth with that. And people see it in our faces and in our witness. Those early disciples, when they saw Jesus, it made a change of the message. Think about it. They were disappointed. They were defeated. They had lost the man that they wanted to follow, and they felt like all was lost. But when Jesus made himself known to them in the breaking of the bread, they turned and hurried back to the apostles and said, we have seen Jesus. And it changed their message. What message would we have without Easter? I mean, it's, it's a great story. The, The crucifixion, it's a wonderful story of how this man died for for mankind. But it's an incomplete story until we add the resurrection. When we realize that he arose from that grave, he, 
he overcame death and the grave and he came forth and people saw him and, and they lived for him. It changed the message completely to one of joy and completeness in us. Where is our joy? What is your story? You see, we all have a story. I don't know if you've ever seen the, the movie Australia, but the little boy talked about, this is my story. And back then in that part of the world, they, they sang it. I sing my story. But what is your story? What story are you singing? What are you sharing? Have you seen Jesus? I have. I've even seen him here, folks. In the midst of this place and this congregation. I've seen Jesus at work in the lives of some of the committed people that continue to share, to work. And you know what it does? Do you know what difference it makes? It makes all the difference in the world when you see Jesus. Have you seen Jesus? I think you have. And you need to go forth and share that, that Savior. Share that Son of God with others. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for the wonder of Easter. And thank you for completing the story by bringing Christ from the grave bringing him forth and letting him be seen and known and letting him share his message with others. Today, we shared that message. And if it doesn't get shared, it's on us. It's on us because we are his people. We are gospel people. And we have that message to share. And it makes all the difference in the world when we share it. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 364, Because He Lives, a great hymn. This altar is open to whatever you need, to profess your faith, to transfer your membership. Whatever you need to do at this altar, it's the Lord's altar. And I invite you to it. Stand as we stand and sing number 364. <clears throat>
always look forward to the Sunday after Easter because we have what I call the post-Easter crowd. And I love every one of you for showing up. Thank you for your presence. Now let's pray. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of his Holy Spirit remain and abide with you both now and forevermore. Amen. forth now with this story, with this song, with this risen Savior. Amen.